Good morning. My name is Pete Border, and I'm your physics instructor in Physics 1107. Uh, I've been teaching this course for a long time, but this is the first time we ever did it in video. So if things get kind of weird, just stick with me. All right, the first lab we're going to do is a fairly easy lab. This is one that's mostly about getting you used to the equipment. So if it seems kind of light, just things will get better. All right, the first lab we're doing is about constant velocity motion in one dimension. I mean, something moving at the same speed in one direction. Uh, it doesn't speed up, it doesn't slow down, it just keeps going. It's kind of like a car that moves at 55 miles an hour straight down the highway through North Dakota. All right, how do we do this? How do we do this Mathematically, well, we have to start off by just figuring out a way to talk about where we are in one dimension. And the easiest way to do that is with a number line. A number line has a place where the coordinate is zero, and then it has a straight line, and as you move along that line, the coordinates get bigger and bigger and bigger. Coordinates for this are generally known as x, so you can call them whatever you want. The point about velocity in one dimension is that you start at one x, you end at another one, and the whole process takes some amount of time. So we've got a beginning x, an end x, and the amount of time that all that takes. Now we can take those numbers and combine them with this formula, you take the ending x, subtract the beginning x, divide by the amount of t, and what you get is something known as a velocity. A velocity is something that tells you how fast you're moving. The magnitude of velocity is the speed. Uh, that's what you see on a speedometer when you're driving through North Dakota. And if you measure over some extended distance. This is called the average velocity over that whole trip. Uh, we can also rewrite that as change in x over change in t. This funny triangle is called a delta. It's a Greek letter and it means change. So we've got v average equals delta x over delta t. Well, if v is constant, meaning you're always moving at exactly the same speed, then this average velocity is the same as the velocity at any point, and we might as well just call it v and forget about the suffix. And then we can take this equation, work it backwards, and we get this, which is one of the big three equations of kinematics. It says that the change in the x position equals the velocity times the change in time. And that's only good if V is always the same. V changes, you have to do something else. We're gonna worry about that next week. So what we have today to, to uh, play with this is the first of our labs. So here's how it all works together. First thing you do is get out the car and tape the pencil to it. I use two strips of just regular masking tape to hold it on there. Now we gotta mark off our number line. To do that, I have a ruler. This ruler's in inches, but we're gonna convert that into centimeters when we do the analysis. So I put this on our testing track. This is just a glass thing we got from the store. You can use Whatever you have lying around the house, people in the past have used coffee table tops or, uh, you know, art pictures, whatever. And then I'm going to take some masking tape and just put it right on the glass and cut that off. And this tape is just so I can make marks on it. Here we go. And I put down a mark every 10 centimeters. Now, 10 centimeters is a little bit less than four inches. So actually, I put it every four inches because I have inches on my ruler. All 
Mark. Mark. And you should make as many marks as you can on your piece of glass. If your glass isn't as long as this one, then just don't put in as many marks, and it will be basically okay. All right, now we got to put in our little clips. So you take the clips, and the idea is to balance them right next to the marks in such a way that they're pretty close to about to fall over. And I put one of these on the glass. They make more noise if you put them on the glass. All right, cool. And they're all kind of lined up. They're all in a straight line going along there. Awesome. There's one more thing to do, which is to add some weight to the car. The car as it stands is kind of light for this business. So I'm taking a roll of washers that also came in the kit. It's fairly heavy. These are big steel washers. And putting them in the car. And we're just about ready. We have one more thing to do, which is fire up Audacity. Click. Ooh, it's working. Awesome. So, I have my microphone right here. This is a special mic you can use. Uh, whatever mic you can find. Having a little stand for it is nice. And here we go. One, two, three. And I got quite a few good scoops, good spikes on there. On Audacity, we have a bunch of clicks. We have captured the clicks. They show up on the Audacity input as little spikes. We're going to use those spikes to tell what time these clips fell over. And we'll do that in the next slice of video. Okay, now what we have to do is go back and analyze all this data we took on Audacity, figure out what happened. To do this, we have to look at Audacity again and use it to figure out what time all these clips fell over. We know where the clips were. We don't know when they fell over yet. We're going to find out by analyzing the audio file we took with Audacity. The first thing to do is cut out anything that's not really related to the stuff we need. And to do that in Audacity works like this. The first thing you do is pick out the little cursor tool up here, the bar, and you put it on the track, and you use that, hold down the left mouse key, use it to grab a section of data, up to edit, and cut or delete makes it go away. So you have to go through and hunt out the part where clips were falling over in your recording. If you're in doubt, you can listen to it, put the cursor at the beginning of the section you want to hear, drag over the whole section you want to listen to, and then hit the arrow up here, and it plays that section. So you can hear it and figure out what was going on. The clicks we want are these really sharp things near the front, and there are some extra ones in here just find the real ones in the midst of all that. So, okay, here's how you find out what the time things happen in with Audacity. You put the cursor kind of where you want it to be and then start zooming up. Zooming up is this little magnifying glass with a plus. Zoom up, zoom up, zoom up. Zoom up. Audacity will let you zoom very far on these. There's our first click, and I want to know what time this first click happened. So I want to know where the beginning of this, of this thing is. And I'm going to put my cursor there, zoom up a little more. Okay, there I can see the first bang is right there. It's about 0. 0.1255 seconds according to the scale at the top. If you want to get closer than that, you can look at these numbers on the bottom. If you set this to be 
milliseconds, it tells you this bang took place at 0.126 seconds, which is pretty accurate. That's one thousandth of a second it's measuring things to. Okay, so our first click was at 0.126. Let's put this in a spreadsheet where we can deal with it. Uh, the spreadsheet program I'm using is Google Sheets, which is free, and I think you get into this by taking this course. I've made a new spreadsheet here. It has five columns in it. The first column is X in inches. The second one is X in centimeters. After that, I have the raw time. I have another one for scale time. And then I have a column for velocity. Okay, X in inches is 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. To convert that to centimeters, I'm going to do that here. And to do that, you click on the box you want to change, type in a formula equals and the one I want to multiply it by, and then the conversion factor, which is 2.54 to go from inches to centimeters. Click on that, and there it is. It has zero inches is zero centimeters. How about that? To get this same thing in the rest of these boxes, you know, back up here, grab this little thing in the corner and start dragging it down and it will automatically put the same formula in all these other boxes. So we find that four inches is 10 centimeters, eight inches is 20, and so on. That's really handy and really nice. All right, so the next thing we need are these times. Now the first time we found already, that was 0.126 seconds. Let me just put it here, type the number in. And where's the next bang in here? Which one of these are real bangs and which ones are not? We'll keep unzooming. Here's the next bang down here. The stuff in between is just sort of noise. If you listen to it, it sounds, doesn't sound like a click. It's just some kind of rumbling of the wheels on the glass. The next actual click happens here. There, that was a click falling over. So the next place we want to measure is here. We zoom up to it again, and it starts happening right here. The time up on the top is 0.2975. Down on the bottom, uh, it tells us 0.298. I'm going to use that number. We'll go back to... Google Sheets and type in 298. Okay, back to, for the next click. Okay, so now we have the time of all the clicks we got. The next thing we want to do is figure out the time between clicks. So to do that, what I'm going to do is take each one of these raw times and subtract the time of the first one from it. That way we'll get the time since this thing started and we will get this equals that minus 0 0.126. That gives me zero. If I grab the corner and drag it down again, I get now I get this is the time since this first click happened. Okay, at this point we have all our data on this spreadsheet. We've got the locations, we've got the times. The thing to do now is to calculate the velocity from this. And to do that, we go back to the formula we had at the beginning of this lab. For each one of these sections, we look at the x at the end minus the x at the beginning, and we divide by the amount of time that took. And we can get the spreadsheet thing to do this automatically. This is all so much easier than when I was a 
taking this course, but we won't go there because that's just sad. So, all right, under velocity, we're going to type in the formula we wanted to use. And to do that, you put in equals, open up a parentheses, click on the first box you want to have in this. On top, we want to have the distance it's gone in between these first two clicks. So we take the x at the end, we subtract x at the beginning, and then we close that parenthesis, and we divide that by the amount of time that went by. And that is the time at the end minus the time at the beginning. Close the parenthesis, hit return, and that shows you what this velocity is. If I drag this formula down, there we go. These are the numbers we got. They're not identical, but they're reasonably consistent. And that's about the best you're going to get with an experiment like this. You will not come up with absolutely constant numbers for the whole thing. What you should be looking for with your experiment when you do this is to have numbers at the end under velocity that are more or less the same. Uh, this is not a real precise course, and with this kind of equipment, you won't get much better than that. So what you should do now is go out and do the experiment yourself. Set it all up, get Audacity working, take your data, analyze your data, and bundle up this spreadsheet and make sure I get a copy of it. I will grade it and come back to you with comments. But there, we just finished your first physics experiment. Good for us. <laughs>